Hello sports fans, welcome to this week's edition of EBC Sports International. Here's the lineup for this episode. Raptors earn victory over Cavaliers, score a win with Filipino fans. In lacrosse, the Vancouver Warriors defeat New York Riptide to earn first home win of season. The Tampa Bay Vipers wrap up minicamp and the Seattle Dragons prepare for the upcoming XFL season. Hello everyone, I'm Frenzel Fajaran coming to you from Seattle, Washington. Welcome to another episode of EBC Sports International. As we have seen in our previous episodes, the love of basketball transcends countries and cultures. Last season, the Toronto Raptors became the first ever Canadian team to win the NBA title, resulting in a lot of Canadians just falling in love with the sport. You know what? Filipinos also love basketball. You know what else? There is a significant number of Filipinos living in Canada. The result? As the Raptors took on the Cleveland Cavaliers, they also hosted the second annual Filipino Heritage Night at Scotia Bank Arena. Here's the story. Last Monday, the Toronto Raptors took on the Cleveland Cavaliers, a team they once had trouble overcoming in the playoffs. With the Raptors trying to bounce back from a bumpy six-game stretch, a win over the struggling Cleveland squad is the kind of confidence that this team needed. Not only were the Raptors hosting the Cavs at home, but Monday night's game marks the second annual Filipino Heritage Night in collaboration with the nonprofit organization, the Rise Tribe. With the Filipino population continuing to rise in Canada, and especially in Toronto, the importance of an organization like the Rise Tribe is evident, a non-profit organization founded by a group of young Filipino Canadians. They saw that even younger generations needed guidance when it came to their education and careers. Abby Albino is one of the co-founders who recognized the power that a sport like basketball has when reaching out to younger generations. Playing in sport or being a part of a sports team, you are essentially part of a larger family. So the transition from being a kid who just like was in a Filipino family to someone who's playing in sport actively, it was it was seamless. So yeah, for me, development in sport is really important. It, again, it teaches you leadership. It teaches you all sorts of life skills. Anyone who purchased Filipino Heritage Night tickets were also able to get their hands on an exclusive t-shirt, which is adorned with the Raptor. In addition to t-shirts, those who were able to purchase premium tickets were also treated with some surprises, like a visit from Bobby Webster, the general manager of the Toronto Raptors. Though Filipino communities in Toronto and in Canada as a whole have been present for years, there's a surge of younger Filipino Canadians who, with the help of organizations like the Rise Tribe, are seeing the possibilities that are available to them. A lot of them just want to do what they love, and that's kind of our generation now. We kind of took it up on our, ourselves to really take somebody who wants to get into photography or wants to get into media and pair them up or at least show them examples of successful Filipino Canadians in those spaces so that they can see that there is representation and that it is possible to achieve that. By the end of the night, the fans were able to see their Toronto Raptors walk away with the win, defeating the Cavs by a score of 133-113. Philippines' own Jordan Clarkson of the Cavaliers finished the night with 9 points in 23 minutes. From the Scotiabank Arena, I'm Zarita Sese, Eagle News, 1 with 25. Thanks, Zarita. And now, let's see a little lacrosse action with our EBC British Columbia correspondent, Anthony Sevilla, as he reports from Rogers Arena in Vancouver, where the Vancouver Warriors went up against the New York Riptide. Anthony? It was all smiles at Rogers Arena as the Vancouver Warriors earned their first win at home and their first of the regular season after defeating the New York Riptide 14-10 in Week 2 action. It was also an emotional win for the entire Warriors organization as the players dedicated their win against New York to head coach Chris Gill. The week prior to the game, the head coach was dealing with the passing of his late father, Sowen Gill, who passed away at the age of 78 due to undisclosed illness. The loss of Sowen Gill was not only a loss for the entire Gill family, but the entire Vancouver Warriors organization and the BC Lacrosse community. The past inductee of the BC Sports Hall of Fame and Canadian Lacrosse Hall of Fame was involved in the lacrosse community for over six decades. From a player to a coach to becoming an executive and eventually the commissioner of the Western Lacrosse Association, his passing was deeply felt throughout the entire community, including the Warriors players. Sowen's been around BC Lacrosse for, for many years, um, so has so Chris, and yeah, we talked about it, we heard about it 
pretty much right away. I know a lot of guys sent him text. Um, he, re he was replying to us right away, just saying, uh, I know Son had a, had a bit of a fight in his sickness, and uh, he just his message was just uh, so in love this team and want, wanted us to take the next step. And so just keep that in mind, everything we do. Um, and obviously he was emotional, so we, we're, we're all there from family here. You know what? Chris was an absolute warrior the way he conducted himself this week. He was absolutely professional, and, and you could tell he was going through a tough time, and, and understandably, and, and I think it's a very very good room in the sense that, you know, a lot of guys checked in on him. Uh, people were very uh, concerned about him, and and he he put himself above that, and he really focused on the task at hand, and there were some emotions throughout the week, but I really commend him for what he did. He was an absolute professional and made sure we had the best chance to be prepared and then get the win. Yeah, I thought we uh, we battled hard all night. Um, maybe the score wasn't, uh, you know, kind of the way the flow of the play went. We, we thought we played a lot better than the score. Um, but yeah, you know what? The guys, uh, we had a little talk before the game, and you know the guys said that they were going to step up. And you know we had a, a guy go down two weeks ago, Billich, and then you know obviously my father passing, and, and they just said we got your back, and we got Billich's back, and they, they went out and did it. How important was it that the guys had your back, the coaching staff as well, considering the tough loss that you had? Oh, it's everything. We're a family, right? So it's huge. Um, you know, one guy hurts, we all kind of hurt. So uh, I was really proud of the guys. It was also Firefighter Appreciation Night at Rogers Arena as the Warriors paid tribute to the men and women in British Columbia who risk their lives every day. Warriors head coach Chris Gill and his father Sowen Gill were also former members of the Vancouver Fire Department. In return, the Vancouver Firefighters Charitable Society donated a special gift to the Warriors players. Chris Gill shares with us that gift and the surprise gesture he got from his players. The Vancouver Firefighters uh, Charitable Society, uh, they've donated this, uh, they've made this, this lid and it's going to be given to the player of the game every game and uh, the boys uh, felt like they wanted to give it to me this week so it was, it was a big honour. Uh, probably Matt Beer should have got it for his play but uh, it was a big honour for them to, to give it to me, this, this meant a lot to me. From Rogers Arena in Vancouver, Canada, I'm Anthony Sevilla and I'm always one with 25. Thank you Anthony. When we come back, the Tampa Bay Vipers wrap up minicamp and the Seattle Dragons prepare for the upcoming XFL season. EBC Sports International will be right back in a moment. Stay with us. Mga isyong panlipunan. Mga isyong pampolitika Tatalakayin, lilinawin, kasama ang mga batikang komentarista Congressman Dante Marcoleta at Jen Sobardiaga Sa ganang mamamayan Lunes hanggang biyernes, alas 8 hanggang alas 9 ng umaga Para sa mga viewers namin sa Middle East at North Africa via OSN, hello sa inyong lahat dyan. Ako po si Alma Angeles at araw-araw tayong magkasama sa Eagle News International. Dito tayo sa Net25 at OSN, siguradong at home ka dito. Ni Senador Richard Gordon ang karamihan sa labindalawang... Tamang impormasyon. Sabi ng Senador, matindi ang pagkakadismaya ng Pangulo sa mga... Patas. Inimok naman ni Guevara ang mga DOJ officials at employees na magdiwang. Wala nang isiningit na pork barrel sa panukalang budget para sa susunod na taon. Uh, we're very confident that this bill will, uh, will pass. Tapat. Batay sa pinakahuling report, nakapasok na sa lalawigan ng Pangasina ng mga karne ng baboy na kontaminado ng African Swine Fever. Tim Cohn, walang aaksayang panahon bilang bagong head coach ng Gilas, Pilipinas. Nakuha ni Juan J.M. Omboy ng Trackman Knights ang panalo laban kay Almerito Penentrado ng Trackman Warriors. Aso ba niyo ang kabuhan ng mga balita? ng Agila, lunes hanggang biyernes, alas 6 hanggang alas 7.30 ng gabi. At mata ng Agila Weekend, Sabado. 
alas 6 hanggang alas 7 ng gabi. Dito sa impilang naghahatid ng mga makabuluhang balita, edutainment, at isyong may kinalaman sa teknolohiya. Net 25 Agila Balita, lunes sa gabiernes, alas 12 ng tanghali hanggang alauna ng hapon. Welcome back to this edition of EBC Sports International. I'm Frenzel Fajeran, broadcasting from Seattle, Washington. Thanks for tuning in. Let's now turn our attention to football. The XFL is set to start its inaugural season in 2020, and teams in the league have been preparing one way is by holding minicamps. Jay Rosquitas of our EBC Florida Bureau visited the Tampa Bay Vipers as they wrapped up their minicamp before the start of the season. Jay? <laughs> Throughout the month of December, the XFL made its progression to the long-awaited inaugural season by launching various organized team activities, or OTAs, and minicamps. Among the eight teams, the Tampa Bay Vipers ended their minicamps with a high note. During their training in Plant City, we asked some of the players their takeaways from the minicamps. My takeaways from this camp, um or a bunch of things, you know, uh, mainly, well, we got a better understanding of what the defensive coaches are asking for us to do on the defensive line, and, uh, and that's going to be huge because he, at, the, at, um, at the end of the day, he wants us to be explosive and uh, think of speed every, every, every snap. Really from the mini camps, it's just uh, getting a better knowledge of the offense, uh, gelling with the guys, the guys we're, going, the guys we're going to be working with, the uh, rest of the teammates, and just uh, building a camaraderie within the group. With less than two months remaining until the XFL season officially starts, some players set personal goals to showcase their ability to still play. My goal is coming up from this upcoming season is uh, just to show people that I still have a lot of football left in me. While others hope to be victorious and one day step back into the NFL. Goals for this year is just uh, you know play great football, have a lot of fun win a lot of games and win a championship here as well and then individually to get back into the NFL and, and uh, try to make my mark there as well. All eight XFL teams will meet in Houston in the coming weeks for scrimmaging and prepare for the start of the 2020 season. Signing off from Plant City, this is Jay Roskitas, always one with 25. Thanks, Jay. From Florida, let's go to my backyard, the Pacific Northwest, where the Seattle Dragons are also gearing up for the upcoming XFL season. Michael Hudson has the story. Mike? Hey, what's going on sports fans? I'm here in Seattle, Washington at the Memorial Stadium going behind the scenes for the XFL Seattle Dragons minicamp. Let's take a closer look and see what they're up to. The Seattle Dragons are the newest professional sports team to grace the Emerald City. The Dragons are one of eight teams around the country who will be competing in this league, which starts in February 2020. Led by a former Seahawk and Seattle hometowner, wide receiver Kaysen Williams, the offense side of the ball is what most Dragon fans are excited to see most. It's kind of cool to see a, another football league besides the NFL. I mean, you know, I'm a huge Seahawk fan. They'll always be number one. But it's kind of cool just to see, you know, some of the things that they're going to do differently. Um, it's great to see Jim Zorn. I mean, that's what really caught my attention. I was like, oh, my God, Jim Zorn's going to be the coach. This is amazing. And then, you know, Husky, Kaysen Williams. And um, so it's great to see him getting, getting another chance and I had hoped he'd be on the Seahawks but they didn't get him I was like no but yeah so Case Williams also BJ Daniels I know uh, at the very least we're gonna probably see exciting things from Jim Zorn I know when he was a coach some um, you know in the NFL uh, you know I know that he was kind of famous for his trick plays and stuff like that so at the very least it's very entertaining it'll be very entertaining the XFL, or Extreme Football League, is ramping up their second go-around in building their professional football empire to appeal to the masses, in addition to the already successful NFL. Oh, I'm just excited this is taking off. Been waiting a while for the XFL to actually, uh, you know, make a move. So I'm excited. I'm glad it came to Seattle. 
I love that we're getting another sports team here. You know, I'm tired of LA, so <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited for the season. I think, you know, I don't want to jinx anything. I don't want, but I'm not going to say we're going to be last. So. <laughs> So as you can see, guys, no matter how wet or how gray it is outside, this is a great turnout here today. Uh, the energy is popping here in the city of Seattle. And in February 2020 is when the inaugural season for the XFL starts. Seattle opens up the season uh, at home against the Tampa Bay Vipers. Reporting from Seattle, Washington, I'm Michael Hudson, and I'm one with 25. Well, that is all for this edition of EBC Sports International. Be sure to join us for the next episode. Make sure to visit our websites at eaglenews.net and eaglenewslive.com, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash eaglenewsph. Thanks for watching. I'm friend Alpha Heron, one with 25. Now in its 51st year, Eagle Broadcasting Corporation has held various child care and development programs. With the support of participating organizations and sponsors, EBC conducted the following activities. Sports Clinic Program wherein basketball coaches and players taught students the importance of discipline. So if I say three claps, two claps, one, two, Three, zero. <laughs> Confidence. Fire. Stance. And teamwork. Uh -uh. Free haircut. Free massage. Feeding programs. School supplies distribution. And storytelling spearheaded by Net25 Kids. EBC Cares, enabling a better community. Ngunit bahagyang bumagal ang pagkilos. Ayon sa pag-asa, huling namataan ang sentro ng bagyo sa layang 450 kilometers silangan ng Giwan, Eastern Samar. Taglay pa rin ang bagyo ang lakas ng hangin nga abot sa 85 kilometers kada oras, malapit sa gitna at pagbugso nga abot sa 105 kilometers bawat oras. Kumikilos na ito pa kaluran, hilagang kaluran sa bilis na 25 kilometers kada oras. Inaasa ang tatama sa Eastern Samar, ang bagyong Ursula at posibleng lumakas pa hanggang sa severe tropical storm. Nakataas ang tropical cyclone wind signal number 2 sa Sorsogon, Masbate, kasama ang Tikaw Island, Northern Samar, Eastern Samar, Samar, Leyte, Biliran, Camotes Islands, at signal number 1 naman sa Bataan, Metro Manila, Rizal, Cavite, Quezon, Laguna, Batangas, Camarines Sur, Camarines Norte, Catanduanes, Albay, Marinduque, Romblon, Occidental Mindoro, kasama ang Lubang Island, Oriental Mindoro, Burias Island at Cuyo Island, Southern Leyte, nalalabing bahagi ng Northern Cebu, Central Cebu, Northern, Northeastern Bohol, Aklan, Antique, Capiz, Iloilo, Guimaras, Northern Negros, 
Northern Negros Oriental, Dinagat Islands, Surigao del Norte, kasamang Siargao at Bukas Grande Islands. Aabot sa higit 4,000 pasahero ang stranded sa mga pantalag sa Bicol matapos makan sila ang mga biyahe bunsod ng Bagyong Ursula. Ayon sa Philippine Coast Guard, Bicol aabot sa 563 pasahero ang stranded sa Pio Duran Fort, Port sa Albay at 25 sa Bapor sa Masbate. Sa Sorsogon, 3,374 ang stranded sa Matnog Port. 224 sa Pilar at 29 sa Bulan. Karamihan sa mga pasahero sa Sorsugon ay patungong Visayas at Mindanao. Samantala, nananatili sa mga pantalan at tigil biyahe rin ang aabot sa 1,059 rolling cargoes, labing dalawang sea vessels at apat na motor banka. Nagtaas na ng Blue Alert status ang National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council dahil sa pananalasa ng Tropical Storm Ursula sa bansa. Una nang nagsagawa ng pre-disaster meeting ang NDRRMC kasama official mula sa iba't ibang ahensya ng gobyerno na tukoy sa pulong na aabot sa 2,939 barangay sa mga bulun-bunduking lugar ang delikado sa pagguho ng lupa habang 3,652 barangay naman ang nanganganib sa pagbaha sa mga mabababang lugar sa Calabar Zone, Mimaropa, Regions 5, 6, 8, Caraga at BARMM. Nakapaghahanda rin ang DSWD ng 259,975 family food packs sa labing pitong field offices nito sa mga lugar na maapektuhan ng bagyo. Bukod pa ito sa 612 bilyong pisong halaga ng non-food relief items na naihanda na rin ng ahensya. Tiniyak ng NDRRMC na may karagdagang stocks ng relief items ang nakastandby at maaring ipamahagi kapag kinakailagan. Nakaalerto na rin ang DSWD at DILD sa posibleng paglikas sa mga residente. Pinapayuhan ng NDRRMC ang publiko na imonitor ang galaw ng bagyo. Niyanig ng magnitude 3.1 na lindol ang bahagi ng Occidental Mindoro kaninang madaling araw. Ayon sa Fibox, ang epicentro ng lindol ay sa layong 80 kilometers timog kandura ng bayan ng Look. May lalim ang pagyanig na 22 kilometers sa tectonic ang dahilan. Hindi naman ito nagdulot ng pinsala sa mga ari-arian at wala rin inaasahang aftershocks. Dalawang daan, apat na put isang titulong ipinamahagi ng DAR sa mga magsasaka sa Tadian at Bauco Mountain Province, December 20, 2019. May report si Irene Kalinga. Namahagi ng 241 na titulo o Certificates of Land Ownership Award, CLOA, ang DAR Provincial Office ng Mountain Province sa magkahiwalay na okasyon sa bayan ng Tadyan at sa bayan ng Bauco Mountain Province. Ang CLOA distribution sa Tadyan ay ginanap sa Barangay Tue, Tadyan at ang CLOA distribution naman sa Bauco ay ginanap sa Municipal Hall, Abatan, Bauco Mountain Province. 252 na magsasaka ang nakinabang sa mga naipagkaloob na titulo. Sa kanyang mensahe sa mga magsasaka, sinabi ni Ms. Adela S. Damaso, ang Provincial Agrarian Reform Program Officer 2, na ang pagkakaloob ng titulo sa mga magsasaka ay matibay na ebidensyang pinanghahawakan ng mga ito na totoong pag-aari na nga nila ang kanilang sinasakang lupa. Dinagdag niya pa na hindi nagtatapos sa pagbibigay ng titulo ang trabaho ng DAR, kundi may kasunod ito, ang pagdadala naman ng serbisyong soporta sa mga magsasaka. Sinabi ni Parpo Adela Damaso na ang mga magsasakang nabigyan ng titulo ay tinatawag na ngayong Agrarian Reform Beneficiaries o ARBs at hinihikayat niya ang mga ito na umanib sa mga organisasyong sinusuportahan ng DAR o di kaya'y bumuo ng organisasyon ng kanilang grupo dahil hindi individual ang pagsuporta sa mga ito kundi idadaan ang lahat ng support services mula sa DAR at sa iba pang ahensya ng gobyerno sa mga ARB organizations upang mas marami ang makinabang. Sa mensahe naman ni Congressman Maximo Dalog na ipinaabot ng kanyang kinatawan na si Ginoong Joaquin Naknas, 
Sinabi niya na dapat maging responsabling recipient ng titulo ang bawat na pagkalooban nito at dapat pagyamanin ang mga lupa ayon sa responsable at sustainableng pagsasaka upang kinabangan ng bawat isa. Mula dito sa Paracelis Mountain Province para sa Eagle News, Irene Banasan, I am one with 25. Susunod ayon sa Malacanang, pangako ni Duterte na limang minutong biyahe mula Quezon City hanggang Makati. Kalimutan muna! Ang detalye na yan sa pagbabalik ng Aguila Balita sa umaga. Aguila, Aguila, Manila or Quezon City is a popular destination, but oftentimes the hustle and bustle of the city can be more stressful on your vacation. So when you feel the need to reconnect to nature or relax again, there's a beautiful oasis just outside of the city called the Garden at Ciudad de Victoria. that you can see here include hydrangea, snapdragon, and stargazers. They're truly beautiful. The gardens at Ciudad de Victoria are so peaceful, tranquil, and beautiful that it's become a haven for young couples and a very popular venue for engagement photos. The next time you want an escape from the big city, the Garden at Ciudad de Victoria is a wonderful place to visit. Aguila Balita, lunes hanggang biyernes, alas 12 ng tanghali hanggang alauna ng hapon. Dapat mo nang kalimutan ng mga motorista at commuter sa Metro Manila ang pangako ni Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte na ibababa sa limang minuto ang biyahe sa pagitan ng Quezon City at Makati City ngayong Disyembre. Aminado si Presidential Spokesperson Salvador Panelo na hindi kayang tuparin ang naturang pangako sa ngayon. Pero iginit ng kalihim na hindi ibig sabihin nito ay susuko ang Pangulo sa kanyang pangakong marisolba ang trafiko sa Metro Manila. Una nang sinabi ni Pangulong Duterte noong Marso at Hunyo na ngayong Disyembre ay magiging limang minuto na lang ang biyahe mula Cubao hanggang Makati. Pero ayon kay Panelo, ginawa ni Duterte ang pangako sa pag-asang maaabot ang ilang kondisyon. Hindi na natutuwa si Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte sa kaliwat kanang insidente ng pagkamatay, bunsod ng aksidente sa kalsada na sanhi ng overspeeding. Isinisi ng Pangulo ang mga aksidente sa trucks at sinabing hindi na ito katanggap-tanggap. Git ng Pangulo dapat nang makontrol ang overspeeding dahil parang masakar na ang nangyayari sa dami ng namamatay. Ayon sa Pangulo, pulisya ang aatasan niyang magkontrol sa overspeeding pero hindi sinabi kung paano ito gagawin. Magugunitang nito lamang nakarang linggo, siyam katao ang nasawi habang marami ang sugatan matapos ang banggaan ng dalawang truck at isang jeepney sa Cardona, Rizal. Muling pinalawig ng Light Rail Transit 1 ang kanilang biyahe ngayong holiday season. Ito na ang ikalawang beses na nagpatupad ng adjustment sa operating hours ang mass transit para sa holiday season. Ayon sa kanilang abiso, magbubukas ang kanilang Roosevelt at McLaren stations ng alas 4.30 ng umaga. Pero tuwing lunes, 
Hanggang Sabado, ang huling biyahe ng tren mula Baklaran ay babiyahe ng alas 11 ng gabi at ang huling tren naman mula Roosevelt ay aalis ng alas 11.15 na ng gabi. Mananatili namang alas 9.30 at alas 9.45 ang last trips kapag linggo. Samantala, narito ang schedule ng last trip sa mga sumusunod na petsa. December 24, Martes, alas 8 ng gabi mula Baklaran at Roosevelt. December 25, Miyerkules, alas 9.30 ng gabi mula Baklaran, alas 4 o alas 9.45 mula Roosevelt. At sa Disyembre at 30, Lunes, alas 9.30 ng gabi mula Baklaran, alas 9.45 ng gabi mula Roosevelt. Disyembre at 31, Martes, alas 7 ng gabi mula Baklaran at Roosevelt. Madadagdagan na ang minimum wage na matatanggap ng mga kasambahay kada buwan sa susunod na taon. Ito'y matapos sa perubahan ng Dole NCR ang 1,500 pesos na dagdag sa minimum wage na 3,500 pesos ng mga kasambahay. Lalabas na magiging 5,000 pesos na ito kada buwan, epektibo mula sa Enero a 2020. 2020. Sakop ng bagong wage order ang lahat ng kasambahay, yaya, cook at hardinero. Dahil dito, maasang dole na maingganyo ang mga kasambahay na manatili sa bansa sa halip na mag-apply sa abroad. Isang bahay sa Davao Oriental ang nasunog. Isang kataon na apula o napaulat na namatay. May detalye si, si Davao Oriental. Nasunog ang isang bahay sa Bakulin, Davao Oriental. Nagsimula ang sunog sa bahay ni Charito Osnan at ang itinuturong dahilan ay ang naiwan na electric water heater. Napinsala ang lahat ng arerian at sa kasiwiang palad ay kasama sa nawala ay ang buhay ng titumput siyam na taong gulang na si Binigna Osnan. Agad naman na dumating ang BFP kasama ang mga kapulisan upang apulahin at tulungan ang mga nabiktima ng sunog. Mula dito sa Davao Oriental, John Lex Romal, Eagle News, and I am one with 25. Iyan ang pag-uulat ni John Lex Romal. Maigpit na siguridad, ipatutupad ng pulisya ngayong holiday season. May detalye naman si Fregs Rodriguez. Aasahan di umano ang pagbigat ng trapiko sa mga kahabaan ng National Highway sa iba't ibang bahagi ng Sultan Kudarat dahil magsasagawa di umano ng palagi ang random checkpoint sa mga National Highway ang tropa ng pulisya, militar, katuwang din ang Joint Task Force Talakudong upang mapigilan ang anumang plano ng mga makakaliwang grupo na karahasan ngayong holiday season. At maglalagay din ng karagdagang police visibility sa mga matataong lugar upang masiguro ang kaligtasan ng mga sibilyan na pupunta sa mga matataong lugar kagaya ng mall at public market. Sa ngayon ay nananawagan ang pulisya at militar na tulungan silang magbantay at maging alerto sa palibot upang maging panatag at masaya kasama ang pamilya ngayong holiday season. Mula dito sa Takarong City, ako si Fred Rodriguez, I am one with 25. Current Motor Exhibit tampok sa Dapitan City upang matuon ang kabataan sa pagiging malikhain sa halip na masasamang bisyo. May detalye si Clever J. Gabriel. Bida sa Dapitan City ang Car and Motor Show na inilunsad ng pamahalaang lungsod sa panguna ng tanggapan ng turismo kung saan tinaluhan ito ng mga Pilipinong mula sa iba't ibang panig ng Mindanao. Isang programa ito kasunod ng kampanya ng lungsod na No to Illegal Vices upang matuon ang mga kabataan sa pagpapalago ng kaalaman sa talento, sining at kultura sa halip na gumawa ng mga masasama at labag na gawain laban sa pamahalaan. Patuloy naman ang ganitong gawain ng syudad upang maisulong ang kampanyang At Least Zero Criminalities at Peaceful City. Mula rito sa Dapitan City, para sa Eagle News, Clover J. Gabriel, I am one with 25. Informasyon at kaalaman sa kalakalan. Balitang Business. May taas presyo mga kumpanya ng langis sa kanilang diesel at kerosene o gaas ngayong araw. 
lahat ay may dagdag na 1 peso and 15 centavos sa presyo ng kada litro ng kanilang diesel. Wala namang ipatutupad na taas presyo sa gasolina. Ang Flying V, Petron at Shell ay may 1 peso and 5 centavos na dagdag presyo sa kada litre ng gas habang mas mataas ng county sa Caltex na abot sa piso 10 kada litro. Una nang nagpatupad ng price adjustment ang Caltex kaninang alas 12.01 ng hating gabi. Sumunod ang iba pang kumpanya kaninang alas 6 ng umaga maliban sa clean fuel. Alas 4 pa ng hapon, epektibo ang taas presyo ng clean fuel. Ngayong holiday season, kaliwat kanan ang kainan. Kaya naman, ilang paraan upang maiwasan na dapuan ng sakit sa bato ang ibabahagi ng ilang eksperto. Si Bel Surara sa detalye. Kaliwat kanan na naman ang dinadaluhang salo-salo ngayong holiday season. Kaya mahalagang mapangalagaan ang mga organ sa katawan tulad ng bato at atay. Kaugnay nito, sinabi ni Dr. Maaladin Biruar, isang nephrologist o espesyalista sa sakit sa bato mula sa National Kidney and Transplant Institute o NKTI hanggang sa kasalukuyan. Marami pa rin ang dinadapuan ng chronic kidney disease o CKD o irreversible na sakit sa bato. Ito ay nangangahulugan ng unti-unting pagkasira ng bato o kidney. Sinabi ni Dr. Biruari na maiwasan naman ang sakit sa bato kung ito ay pangangalagaan. Ito madalas kami natatanong, mm -hmm. gaano ba kadami yung dapat na iniinom sa isang araw? Opo. So, yung sinasabi po natin dito mga 2 to 3 liters per day, no? Mm -hmm. Actually, as much as you can, mm -hmm. um, wala naman hong namamatay sa Opo. sobrang pag-inom ng tubig. Mm -hmm. At huwag ko kayong matakot kung sa pag-inom nyo, umihi kayo. Siyempre, kasi mm -hmm. nag-work po yung ating kidney. Ayun. Ngayon, depende rin po yan sa panahon. Mm -hmm. Kung masyado pong mainit, kailangan uminom ng mas maraming tubig kasi mm -hmm. hindi natin na mamalaya na wawalan tayo ng tubig sa katawan pag pinagpapawisan tayo. No? Mm -hmm. Ilan sa paraan ay pagpapanatiling fit at active ng katawan. I-monitor ang blood pressure, i-control ang blood sugar level, iwasan ang masamang bisyo tulad ng paninigarilyo at dagdagan ang pag-inom ng tubig. Binigyan din pa ni Dr. Biruar, na mas mataas naman ang tsansa na magkaroon ng sakit sa bato ang mga taong may diabetes, may alta presyon, naninigarilyo at obese. Para sa Eagle News, Bell Sorara and I'm one with 25. Kakaiba! 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 Kagulat gulat! Balita Patuloy na dumarami ang binubuksang pet hotel sa Jordan. Isa na rito ang pet zone na matatagpuan sa Aman. Hindi lamang own pets ang welcome dito kundi maging ang mga stray dogs. Sinisikap ng pet zone na makapagbigay ng dekalidad na serbisyo para sa mga hayop dahil bukod sa play at training areas ng kanilang klinik ay ma-enjoy din ng mga aso ang nail trimming, hair clipping, bathing at hair dry para ma-perfect. Perfect! Ang kwarto kung saan pwedeng mamalagi ang mga alagang aso ay nagkakahalaga ng 3 Jordanian dinars kada araw at maaring ma-monitor ng amo sa pamagitan ng online cameras. Dapat lang naman, pangalagaan sila, di ba? At yan ang naging kabuhan ng ating may init na balita sa pangalan ng ating mga kagapay sa Eagle News Service. Maganda umaga sa atin lahat. Ito si Mylin Mariano Rivera and I'm one with 25. Susunod ng programang sa ganang mamamayan kasama si na Congressman Dante Marcoleta at Jen Subarjaga. Sumayin niyo ang mga balitang kinala, mainit na isinunan at inihanay ng Eagle News Service.